Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for another segment in the Jane Irrigation Training Series. And today I'm really excited because uh, we've got um, uh, Kevin Stewart back for uh, part three of our Jane Hemp webinar series. You know, Kevin's really covered well the basics of uh, growing and irrigating hemp. And today we're really uh, expanding into that next area, right, where I say, gee, you put all this effort into the growing and the irrigating. Now, what do you do about the economics? How do you make sure that you get paid or your reward for the work you've put in? And uh, today, uh, Kevin uh, hits on, on quite a few of those and kind of just rounds out this whole subject for us. So very excited to see this. Um, and for those of you who don't know Kevin, uh, you know he's been on here quite often, but Kevin is a certified irrigation agricultural specialist uh, more importantly to me, though, uh, he has uh, been involved in agriculture his entire life. Uh, but even more importantly than that, Kevin's got a real passion for ag. He's really been great about helping growers uh, improve their growing practices, no matter what the crop. Now, hemp has been a crop that really has come on uh, big in the past few years for various reasons that Kevin's going to cover. And Kevin's one of the few experts uh, nationwide that really has been involved with uh, hemp production and really knows the ins and outs. So uh, great to hear from Kevin again today. And with that, I'm gonna say, uh, Kevin, welcome. And uh, really, uh, really excited to see this. Thank you, Richard, I appreciate it. Uh, coming in from uh, Eastern Idaho uh, today and uh, appreciate everyone that uh, has joined uh, this uh, webinar. It, uh, um, in, in this uh, webinar, we're going to really cover the uh, kind of part three of this webinar series uh, in hemp. And uh, I know that I personally have learned a lot uh, over the uh, past couple of years um, as we really kind of paid attention to this uh, crop and uh, visited with a number of growers. Um, this is uh, one thing I'm always amazed. It's um, just the, uh, the vast amount of differences that, that people uh, have, uh, how they've approached this crop. It, uh, I don't think there's really any two ways where people uh, are growing really this, uh, this same crop. There's, there's a lot of different approaches and uh, I think it really just underscores the importance that uh, there's so much that really still needs to be learned um, with this crop as we uh, you know, get and gain more experience in this. Yeah, which is really interesting, Kevin, for a couple reasons, right? We've all heard, uh, we've heard some horror stories about hemp. We've heard about some uh, big paydays with hemp. And uh, one thing I appreciate about you is you always bring uh, kind of the, uh, what I call the real story, you know, what, what's actually going on, not the outliers, but what's happening for most. And uh, so all our viewers benefit from that. And I just want to remind them that you can either use the uh, Zoom webinar chat or the Q&A as uh, Kevin's presenting today. And I'll be happy to pass those uh, questions on to Kevin uh, throughout the presentation. Yeah, Richard, um, you know, we talk about uh, people kind of hitting a payday. I think in 2018, uh, there were a lot of people uh, that did really well uh, in this crop. I think 2019, uh, was uh, uh, kind of an awakening and uh, people had to really uh, um, kind of figure out what they were going to do just because there were so many acres that were planted uh, than, than previous years. And 2020 has, uh, you know, we've had kind of our own set of uh, challenges and, uh, and, and circumstances. But uh, in this webinar, we'll, uh, we'll take a moment, we'll uh, kind of go over uh, kind of the current overview uh, of the industry and uh, we'll talk about setting a budget and really understanding uh, some of the costing around uh, growing hemp. And uh, I, I will say this, this presentation and uh, all three presentations have really been focused on hemp for CBD. Uh, we don't really talk too much about uh, hemp for fiber or for grain production, uh, kind of two totally different crops uh, where hemp for CBD makes up really about 90% of, of, of all the planted acres. Uh, we felt like this was, uh, and this has really been where most of our business has been um, uh, you know, throughout the US. Uh, we're gonna talk uh, quite a bit about uh, some harvest and storage uh, recommendations, whereas in, you know, we're at that time of the year. And uh, I know there's a lot of people that have had a hard time marketing and selling their hemp crop. And we'll, uh, we'll touch on just a few, uh, a few of our thoughts and uh, suggestions on how uh, you can uh, go about doing that. 
That's exciting, Kevin. I, I remember a few years ago when I first saw you speak on a hemp and uh, boy, thinking about the pricing and what was happening at that time. And it was probably 2018. And I think everybody who was listening was thinking about how much land they had around their house. Right? I've got a quarter acre. I, <laughs> and uh, certainly that caught fire with a lot of ag producers too. So uh, it'll be interesting to get the, uh, the history here and the progression. Yeah, absolutely. I think if, if, if you had, uh, if it was legal to grow it in your state and you had any kind of spare ground and you had kind of run the economics, I think this was something where uh, you would take a serious look at and, and consider, uh, you know, this should be something that you grow uh, in your, uh, your mix. Um, again, just kind of looking at the industry highlights, uh, acres are down uh, from year over year uh, from uh, 2019 to 2020. And uh, we've seen, uh, it's all over the board, but I, at least a, a 9% uh, decrease in acres. Some, some experts are saying it's much more than that. So I don't have a true number, um, but people, everyone I've talked to, um, really throughout the Western states, uh, their states, uh, they've seen a major decline in, uh, in uh, growing hemp. And uh, you, you ask yourself, okay, well, what's, what's really the main cause or the, the main causes uh, for this decline? And really, there was simply put too much hemp grown last year. Um, there was just a major oversupply and uh, just too many acres and, and not enough demand to fill that market. In fact, there were so many uh, hemp growers um, that uh, I mean, there's still quite a few that have their 2019 crop still in storage. And uh, it, at today's current prices, I don't think anyone is really too interested in uh, selling it. Um, uh, right now, I think they're you know, waiting for the market to rebound a little bit. So, um, so Kevin, you can hang on to your crop for a while and still be okay. You, you can, and we'll, we'll kind of talk through that. Um, uh, I mean, the short answer is yes. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later uh, when we talk about uh, storing and drying uh, your crop. But if you do it properly and uh, you make the right, uh, right investments, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can store it. I wouldn't say you can store it in, indefinitely, but you can store it. Um, I, I know of people personally that have stored this uh, uh, for more than a year and uh, the quality is still good. And uh, they're just really kind of waiting for the right, uh, for the right moment, the right market. And uh, so with, with estimates that uh, the CBD market, there's every indication that this market's gonna continue to grow. Right, right now, the global estimate is that it's just over 9 billion. Uh, and that's a global number. I don't know exactly what it is here, uh, just in the United States, but it's a pretty impressive number and it's gonna continue to, to grow and it's gonna continue to become more common uh, in uh, different uh, uh, different commodities. I, I saw just the other day, the Ocean Spray had released, uh, released a, uh, a, a drink that uh, has uh, CBD in it. So I think it's becoming more and more mainstream. Uh, one thing worth noting, and uh, you know, this was cited by, uh, you know, one of the experts in hemp, but uh, at where the current market is at, the, uh, it, it can really be satisfied with about 100,000 acres of, of hemp for CBD. And we have grown anywhere from three to 450,000 acres of hemp here in the United States. And so that's one of the reasons why we're seeing a little bit of a depressed uh, market uh, the prices have, um, you know, begin to uh, fall and um, there's, you know, hasn't been quite as much, uh, uh, you know, interest uh, around that as far as getting, uh, getting your crop sold. So again, I thought that was interesting that uh, 100,000 acres of hemp will really satisfy the current, uh, you know, market here in the United States. Yeah, when I heard that, Kevin, you know, that's really discouraging. Right, it makes me not want to be in the hemp business. Yet, plenty of people are still in. What's uh, what's what's happening there? What's the reason? So, I, I think uh, what you're going to see is, is a lot of people have dropped out. They've looked at it and said, "This is it's a tough crop to grow, uh, just because of the learning curve." Um, there's there's quite a few different intricacies in growing this crop, and uh, if you don't have a contract uh, in place, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in, in when we you know, 
talk about marketing the crop. Um, yeah, it's it's really kind of turned uh, some growers away from uh, from farming this. At the same time, there's other growers that have been extremely successful. They've done a great job marketing this crop. Uh, we've seen people that have uh, uh, become vertically integrated and kind of opened some of their own uh, extraction uh, labs. And so it, it's interesting. And we'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk through, there, there's different types of markets within just the CBD uh, spectrum. And there, there's some that are really, really growing. The, uh, the hemp flower um, is a really hot market while um, maybe biomass is, is uh, dipped a little bit. So we'll spend uh, some time going through that. I will say that COVID has really kind of slowed things down. People just uh, aren't out and about. They're not, uh, they're not shopping as much, uh, especially at retail locations. And uh, I think a lot of people are probably on uh, tighter budgets. There's not as much discretionary money uh, to spend. But uh, I think a lot of uh, the business that is uh, going on is really through e-commerce. And I do think consum uh, consumer interest will uh, begin to rise uh, more uh, for these CBD products, you know, we're just in kind of the interesting year of 2020. Yeah, it is interesting. I was thinking back, uh, you know, when I really thought this was going to take off was uh, I was in a uh, conservative state, Arizona, and I noticed that at uh, Circle K is a big convenience store in that state, and I noticed you could buy uh, CBD, oils, potions, lotions uh, at Circle K, and even at the uh, Bashes, uh, one of their big... Uh, uh, statewide grocery stores, you know, they had it at the end of every row of uh, the cashiers. And so uh, you start to see that um, they don't put those in because there's not demand for it. And uh, you could see how this was, uh, I felt how it was really going to explode. Now, I, I think you're right, COVID put a damper on this, but boy, uh, in the coming years, I think there's a lot of potential. I, I, I think you're, you're right. And I think most people uh, that are in this market in this space uh, have that same vision and believe that this market is going to fully rebound and continue to grow. Uh, when you talk about the estimated uh, cost to produce this, uh, I quickly just kind of took some numbers and dropped it into a uh, pie chart just so that you can uh, have a, a good, easy visual. We, uh, we see that there's, it, it costs about $13,000 an acre, you know, plus or minus, uh, to grow uh, the CBD hemp crop. And uh, it's come down quite a bit from where it used to be. Um, I know there were some growers that were spending north of 20000 maybe $25,000 an acre. Mm. And, uh, I think, uh, you know, the genetics and the seed have come down quite a bit in, uh, uh, in, in price. But you, you still look at this. Um, I mean, the seed itself makes up more than half of the cost uh, to grow hemp. Uh, something else that I think really caught people... Uh, by surprise is just the sheer amount of labor that you need to uh, handle this crop with uh, with a lot of things really not mechanized you, you can't uh, you know you can't spray herbicides there's just a lot of things that uh, really involve hand labor I don't think anyone would have realized that they're going to spend a thousand dollars an acre just to weed uh, throughout the season or you're going to spend a thousand dollars an acre just to harvest your crop so these are, you know, these are, these are real numbers, real costs. And uh, I just wanted to break this out so people can kind of see, I, and I, I didn't pick every, uh, every uh, category within it, but uh, you, know, you can see that fertilizer is uh, kind of a small, uh, a small expense irrigation. Uh, in my opinion, it's a small, but very important uh, and critical uh, part of the pie in growing hemp. And we'll, uh, we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that. You know, Kevin, anybody who's in business, right, and um, understands the value of really knowing their cost, right? That's kind of the secret to everything um, and understanding that. You know what I wish we had? I wish we had some kind of a what-if spreadsheet. Oh, <laughs> that, that would tell me, you know, what, what, what my, uh, my inputs are and how that was going to affect my profits. And it, it yeah. seems like maybe you've got something here. Uh, you you, you uh, provided a, a good segue to, to lead into this slide. And uh, I, what I wanted to show uh, here on this, and Richard, can you see my cursor? As I sure can. Around? Yep. Okay. I just wanted to show a few different examples and comparisons. Um, a 
wanted to show uh, a yield of 1,500 pounds per acre at a dollar a pound uh, with the difference of 5% uh, CBD versus 10% CBD and what that means. And again, your, your, your cost uh, would be about 12,500. This doesn't include really a drip irrigation system, um, but you, you're, you're looking at maybe an average cost of just over 12,000 for both scenarios. What's interesting is if, uh, if you get a very low CBD score, uh, 5%, which uh, is probably more common than, than not, you can see in a case like this, you're actually, you're, you're in the red, you're gonna lose money when you look at, uh, I mean, you're gonna get $7,500 of revenue per acre, but your costs uh, have, have far exceeded that. So uh, you're gonna be in the hole about $5,000. It's interesting, just by going from 5% to 10% CBD, and really trying to target a little bit better quality, you can see in this scenario, you're actually gonna make $2,500 an acre. And these are general numbers. Uh, you know, I would, I would definitely um, ask that you don't, and you take this with a grain of salt and uh, you want to do your own numbers and really kind of dive in. Uh, on uh, this comparison below, I, what I wanted to show was again, uh, a 1500 acre crop at a dollar a pound at 15% CBD and kind of what that looks like. And there's a lot of growers, you talk to a lot of people and you ask them, what is, what is your goal? I mean, a lot of growers are trying to get to 20% CBD, levels of, of concentration of CBD within, uh, within their leaves and stems. And uh, you can see what that does. I mean, it, it, I mean you're going to make $10,000 an acre, even with a depressed, uh, you know, depressed uh, price per pound. What I really wanted to show, and this is something that we're working on, is uh, I wanted to show kind of this drip advantage where we consistently see increased yields. And I used a 20% increase uh, over just the mm -hmm. uh, all things being equal. Uh, although I did increase uh, the cost uh, to put in a drip system, but you can see what this, uh, this revenue comes out to 25,000. You know, your, your income um, over cost per acre is uh, 12,875. So you're by, Investing, say, between five and seven hundred dollars an acre for a drip system, it really could pay you back almost an extra three thousand dollars an acre, uh, kind of given a situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just simple math that works out to a six and a half percent rate of return, so not too bad of an investment um, in kind of a depressed uh, market. Now, I, I know prices are even lower than where they are in, in this scenario. I just picked a, a nice, easy uh, round number to kind of work with. Yeah, so so many questions here, Kevin. Uh, first of all, I think, um, and this is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, somebody who's farming corn or soybeans in the Midwest, uh, they're on an average year thinking about $200 an acre. On a really good year, maybe $400 an acre. Am I in the ballpark there? I think it might be a little bit more than that, but, but probably not much more. Um, I, I, think, I think people are probably hoping to... Uh, in a good year, maybe net one to two thousand dollars an acre. Yeah, in, in some of these large volume commodity crops. Yeah, so so a number like twelve thousand or ten thousand is it really is a huge number in relative. It, it it really is, and I think that's what's driven so many people uh, to consider this market. And uh, now there's there there's huge risks um, as as we've talked about, and there's. Uh, um, when we talk about marketing, there, there's a lot of growers that just kind of rushed to plant this and didn't really think about who was going to buy it or if they were going to be able to sell it. And uh, so a lot of people are out, you know, tens of thousands of dollars or, or, or whatever it is, depending on the scale, uh, with no home, just because uh, there, there has been an over uh, supply of this product. So it uh, it doesn't come without uh, some risk. And we'll talk a little bit more, if I were growing this, some of the things that I do um, right. to, just to try and protect myself. Uh, so, so Kevin, how, how realistic is 15% uh, CBD? I know growers that have, uh, you, you get the right genetics and uh, you farm it the right way and you don't stress your crop and you, uh, you, you try and take it as far as you can throughout the season. Uh, because these uh, these percentages are going to continue to rise as you're going through 
uh, the farming season. So it, uh, I think it's, I think it's a lofty goal. I know people that have, uh, that have done this consistently. And uh, I think probably 10% might be more uh, in line, but uh, there's a lot of really smart progressive farmers out there that uh, have really kind of figured out and carved out a, 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 a niche in uh, this market. And uh, yeah, I, there's people that are obtaining it. It's not, uh, it, it's not so far out there that you can't, uh, you can't get there, but things need to happen for it to, to, to work out. Right. And then we have a question from the audience and um, the pricing you use to get to uh, where you did on that spreadsheet, are they for total biomass or is this for high grade flour? This is for, for, for total biomass. Yeah. So this doesn't, uh, and, and I, I didn't do the economics, uh, on the, uh, the the total flower, that, that's kind of a whole different uh, scenario. And I might just uh, kind of go off course here for just a minute. And uh, at Jane Irrigation, we are putting together a hemp calculator that will take into account um, all of your costing. Um, all you have to do is enter your plant spacing. It'll populate the number of plants per acre. Um, if you know your fertilizer costs, you can enter those if you have an idea um, what your labor is going to be. You can play around with, are you growing for just uh, the smokable flower or are you growing for biomass? And you can uh, kind of play the what if game and uh, look at different scenarios and uh, kind of estimate different yields. And uh, yeah, so this is, this is something uh, that we are in the 11th hour of uh, putting together. I, I hope to have that for this presentation. And uh, uh, if, if you're like, you know, us, I mean, everyone's extremely busy right now. So it, uh, it was something that we wanted to, to have for this. Um, it, we're, we're almost there and uh, we'll make sure that uh, everyone that's on this webinar uh, gets an invite to check that out. I think we're just a few weeks away uh, from finishing that, but it's gonna be a great resource and a great tool for anybody considering hemp to do some preliminary budgeting and planning and see if this uh, if this will make sense. Yeah, that's so helpful, Kevin. I'm so glad everybody viewing is going to get that. And we'll just have it posted on the website, right? So that people can uh, use it uh, from time to time. We'll post it. Yeah, it'll be posted on, on, on our website. Um, again, everyone on the webinar will we'll make sure uh, you get a link to that when, uh, when it's ready to be posted uh, so that you're aware uh, of that. And uh, yeah, we look forward to it. It's uh, I've seen some of the behind the calculations on it. And, you know, these are taking, this is simple math, but it's just combining everything into one uh, calculator in one place where you can just go through. And it's very user-friendly. It's very easy to work with. Uh, not, uh, you don't need to be an economist or an accountant to, to really go through and, and figure these things out. And so we, we really feel it's gonna, it's gonna be a great tool for our customers um, that are uh, using drip irrigation. And that's one of the things we're going to add is if you're using drip, um, you know, some of those additional costs, but also the, the savings in water and what those uh, additional yields are going to be and how that reflects out in your, uh, your total revenue. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I'm really excited to see that. So we had another question too, right? 10%, uh, 15%, 5% of CBD makes such a difference in, uh, in my outcome or my revenue as a grower. Um, how often should I be testing? How do I test regularly so I have an idea? I don't want to wait till the end of the year, right, and have a big surprise. You don't, but you, I mean, your crop needs to get to a certain stage before you can really start, you know, determining. It really needs to be kind of in that flowering stage. And there's uh, um, there, there's potency level testers that you can test for both CBD and also for THC. And they're, they're spending. You're going to spend probably $1,500 uh, for it, at least uh, to have something, but it'll give you uh, kind of real time in field approximate values. And uh, it's not going to be 100% accurate and you can't use that um, in, in lieu of getting testing um, from an, uh, an accredited uh, lab. Uh, so, but it will give you an idea how to, how to monitor your crop and uh, if, uh, if, if you're seeing that you are on that cusp of the THC exceeding 0.3% and maybe you're at nine or 10% uh, 
uh, CBD, maybe it's time to harvest. Maybe it's a little bit of a roll the dice. You don't want to risk uh, your crop exceeding that and going hot and having to uh, destroy that. So uh, yeah, that technology is available, Richard, and uh, growers are using it. And uh, it is uh, something, again, if I were growing this crop, uh, it would be something I would make an investment in uh, so that I can uh, check and monitor. And I would probably be doing it several times a week. Yeah, it seems like it's a good investment. That and drip irrigation would be two things uh, I'd definitely be, uh, uh, two tools I'd be using. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about harvest real quick. When we, uh, we, uh, you've done all of this work uh, to, for, for this crop and you want to bring it in and you want to make sure that uh, you've got to, that you're set up uh, to, to harvest this and that you've uh, done your, your preparation uh, for this. Um, it is, I just talked about, you want to make sure that you're spot checking for CBD and for THC levels. Um, some growers will spot check this weekly really just to track the progress. Um, another indication that it's time to harvest is uh, you probably need a loop or a magnifying glass, um, but you want to check the trichomes on the flower and see what color they are. If they, if they're, if shifted from kind of that milky white to an amber color, that's a good indication uh, that your your plant is about uh, ready to be harvested. Something else, uh, as I talk to different people, is uh, you really want to check for mold in your field, and you want to remove that um, if. Uh, if that gets into your, if that gets harvested and you gets into your drying process, uh, that could really be a problem and you're gonna get knocked on it. Uh, when you do your certificate of analysis, something like that will show up if it's really prevalent. And so a lot of growers will spend a lot of time going through and checking to make sure that they remove that gray mold, uh, which is a form of botrytis uh, that, that grows, uh, kind of grows under really moist uh, conditions. If you've got uh, something that's a little too wet you also want to make sure that you check with your state and local uh, um, personnel. And uh, I, the way I understand it is that uh, you you need to submit your test, and I think you need to have your results back. And then you've got 15 days to uh, to uh, begin the harvest. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I know this is kind of a uh, there's a lot of people that have complained about this 15 day window, uh, especially if you're a large operation. That's, uh, that's quite a bit to harvest within 15 days. And uh, we'll see if that changes, but that, uh, that currently is, uh, I, I believe in place in most, most places, but I would make sure that you do check, check that out, uh, whatever state or county you're growing in. Yeah, so you, you better be ready to harvest when you uh, submit the test. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you really need to understand and hopefully you've thought about this before you go about it, but are you going to hand harvest or are you going to machine harvest? And uh, there's, there's different schools of thought on this and you see people, everyone kind of has their own thought, but uh, if, if you're growing for, for kind of that, uh, that flower, the CBD flower, you're going to hand harvest that, or you're going to machine harvest it very carefully where you're, uh, you're kind of uh, carefully picking that plant uh, kind of right there at its base. Uh, if, if you're going to hand harvest it, you're going to want to take really the top one to two feet. You really, you want that cola, the flower uh, is really what you're after. That That's what has the highest percent uh, uh, CBD. If you're growing for CBD biomass for extraction, I've seen people combine and, and harvest this wet and they have uh, just baled it wet and uh, stored it um, in a plastic wrap and then when they're ready to bring it out to dry, um, they'll go ahead and do that. And I've got a few pictures on that. And uh, you, another indicator um, is you really want to be targeting about a pound uh, per plant is, uh, is what you're looking for. And so that uh, those are all uh, good recommendations when you're harvesting to be uh, aware and cognizant of. You really want to plan for labor. Uh, oh. I've heard that some people have had as many as 200 people uh, in the field hand harvesting uh, the, the crop. So it, uh, if, if you don't have labor, you need to plan for that. Um, I think that's what catches a lot of people by surprise is just how labor intensive this is to harvest. 
Um, I talked about uh, if you're hand harvesting, you really want to kind of focus on that uh, one to two top feet, which is of the plant, which is really where the flower is at. And uh, something really worth uh, paying attention to is this flower can bruise pretty easily. And uh, if you are putting this in bins, you probably don't want to fill the bin to the very top. You probably want to fill it to half capacity. So, or if it's a bin or a trailer, uh, I think uh, most people have found that half capacity is probably a good rule of thumb just to avoid um, pushing down on that flower, possibly bruising it, and, uh, and degrading really the quality of it. And just pointing out the obvious, you probably want to make sure that you have your barn or your drying location as close as possible to wherever you're farming. You don't want to spend a lot of time uh, going back and forth trying to transport um, this, uh, your, your, your crop, uh, you're just going to waste uh, um, unnecessary amounts of time um, where time is really going to be extremely crucial and critical uh, to get this crop out. Kevin, are, are most growers doing their own drying or do they go to custom drying houses? Is it a complex process? What's all that look like? It, it, it's a little bit of the all of the above, Richard. Um, you can dry your hemp really in any structure. Yeah, I, I, I hate to say this, but I've heard of people, you know, drying them in containers. I've heard of people drying them in, in old, old vans or cars. Um, if you have a, a structure that you can maintain your temperature between a 60 to 70 degree range and, and really kind of keep your humidity at a constant level of about 60%, uh, you can air dry, which is what most people do. Um, I know in the state of Pennsylvania, I think 70% of, of the growers uh, that grow hemp in that state, which is really kind of an upcoming state, 70% uh, of them air dry this, mm. and uh, which means you're, you're not running it on a belt or putting it in a, a kiln or an oven. You're just letting time uh, take its course. Now there's things that, that you need to do. You need to have uh, fans. Uh, you need to have a dehumidifier. I think having like a 100 pint per day uh, dehumidifier uh, is, is probably a good thing. Um, and I know that there's, there's companies that will help you decide how many dehumidifiers you need, how many fans you need. You're really trying to keep circulation moving. You're trying to remove the cold air uh, from the leaves and stems and replace it with warmer air. Uh, five to seven days is pretty common uh, to, uh, to naturally uh, air dry that crop. Uh, if you try and do it faster, uh, I think you risk losing some of the terpenes, which are really kind of have that aromatic uh, uh, aroma and flavor, uh, which is very desirable. And so you, you want to make sure that you're not losing that. So you don't try and rush this process or else you may um, uh, lose uh, some, of those, uh, the, some of those terpenes. Most uh, farmers are putting these out maybe a foot apart from each other. Uh, as they're trying to dry these. And something that I thought was interesting, you, you really want to try and get these plants down to about 10%. And uh, there's obviously equipment that, that can tell you um, at what moisture level you're at. But uh, I think people have learned that if you can just take one of the stems and, and snap it back, maybe the size of a pencil, and if it just snaps uh, pretty easily, that's a, a telltale sign that your crop is ready. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would definitely... Uh, Probably do that, but also officially test it and make sure that you, you're at the right moisture. Hmm. Just a few photos I wanted to show that you can see that these are whole plants that have been uh, harvested, either uh, mechanically or hand harvested. And they're just, they're hang drying. And so you can kind of see, it's a little hard to see kind of the spacing here, but uh, they're probably, this looks like they're more than a foot apart uh, as far as distance between rows. Um, just another example of uh, kind of hang drying. This is actually, they've stripped the leaves from the stem and they've put them in trays and uh, just let them, letting them dry out. The, the, the leaves have a higher percent CBD than the stems. And so those that are really focused on getting uh, the highest level of CBD, uh, you're gonna wanna separate the, the, the leaves from the stems. And when I was talking about people uh, combining this and, and baling it wet, this is what this looks like. Oh, wow. 
uh, they, they've, they've, they've put it into, they bailed it. And so you, it's in a kind of a more of a circular bail. Uh, they just recently took the white plastic off of this and uh, they, uh, they'll, they'll purposely drop this off the forklift just to kind of break it up a little bit and then they'll transport it. And this is what a, a, a finished dried product looks like. Now this has been, uh, you know, put through a dryer. It costs about a dollar a pound to dry this, Richard. So it's, it's not, it's not cheap. It's uh, when, when we talk about people selling uh, their hemp for a dollar a pound and, and it costs you a dollar a pound to dry it, right? So you can see when you're at the lower end of the, of the price, uh, something like this may, well, people may think twice about doing it and just saying, okay, I, I'm just gonna air dry this and I'm not gonna spend a dollar a pound uh, right. to have somebody uh, do it for me. You had asked what the price was. So on average, I think it's about a dollar a pound. Uh, lastly, I, I wanted to spend a little time talking about tr trying to market your hemp crop. And uh, uh, we, th the industry is showing every sign that this is going to continue to grow, the CBD market. And uh, I think uh, a lot of people forget to really start with the end in mind, uh, to quote Stephen Covey. It, I think it's really important to understand exactly what you're trying to do and what market you're trying to serve. Are you growing for just the, the CBD biomass or are you really focused on the CBD flower or are you focused on uh, these CBD extracts? So I think you need to answer those questions first before you even plant a seed. Um, I think it's really a, important to, to know, understand, and really comply with, with any federal, local, state uh, law. You want to make sure that you understand that. You don't want to get yourself... Uh, uh, in a, a precarious situation, uh, I would sit down with an attorney and have an attorney draft me a contract as I'm putting together my business plan uh, to make sure. Um, you know, one thing to realize if you're growing strictly for biomass, where you're just you're, you're growing for this uh, uh, again the biomass, and you're going to sell it to uh, an extraction company, or you're going to sell it to um, you know maybe maybe a broker. Um, hand harvest versus machine harvest. I think studies have shown that you're probably gonna get about 5% more CBD uh, if you hand harvest versus machine mm -hmm. harvest. Now there's not extensive studies out there. That's just uh, one conversation with somebody and, and kind of their, their thought. So, but it is something worth uh, maybe looking into. You definitely wanna make sure that you, uh, as you're marketing this product, that it's contaminant free. Uh, you wanna make people, consumers want a 100% safe product they don't want, you know, any kind of mold or anything growing uh, in this or any foreign type material. So I think having a good certificate of analysis um, and I think probably the point that most people have missed is having a contract in place more than just a handshake. And I know that in, in our industry, we're all, you know, we trust everybody and uh, I, that just hasn't worked out. Uh, for the, the benefit of the farmer uh, in, in some of these cases. There's a lot of farmers that were told that they uh, needed to produce a certain amount, they would get paid a certain price, and either they cut the, the price or they cut the amount that they were willing to take. If you have something more official in place, um, I, think, uh, I think you're, you're going to uh, mitigate some of your risk. Kevin, Kevin, we have another question here, and it's, uh, are there many growers that are... Uh... Uh, <clears throat> vertically integrating to where they're growing, they're packaging the product and they're selling the product. Yeah, I, I don't know the percent, but, but to answer your question, yes, there's, there's growers that are doing that. Um, they, they've looked at it and they just want to take that risk out or they feel like that profitably they can make more money or they have the, the know-how and the skill set to do that. So there's growers that have from, they've, they've kind of started their own transplant business where they're growing their own transplants from seed and they're growing the crop and they're really marketing the crop maybe to themselves um, as far as uh, getting the CBD uh, extracts out. And you, I mean, you have to have a good knowledge on what you're doing there. And then they're, they're marketing that oil, whether it's a uh, kind of a full spectrum or if it has, you know, more of these uh, distillates, which you can isolate things out where you can, if you don't want the THC in there, you can take the THC out. Um, if you want everything in there, you can leave that in there. So, and they're putting these into oils and into creams and lotions and, and different uh, uh, 
uh, different um, products. So yeah, yeah, there, there's, there's growers that are doing it. I don't know what percent. I, my guess is it's, it's probably pretty small, but uh, certainly uh, it is something that, that is going on for sure. Yeah, my, uh, my marketing brain is really uh, <laughs> whipping around when I hear this, right? Because I think about how important the quality is. And if you can take and promote that quality all the way through your process, you're going to really be able to get a premium for the final product. And uh, it's a unique opportunity right now to do that in, in this business. It, it really is. Yeah, I think uh, um, if, if I were doing this, I would probably look for platforms where I know a lot of people are on. Uh, that are interested, and I would uh, I would try and and uh, you know be uh, you know maybe a leader on some of those platforms, whether it's you know whether it's you know different chat groups or on Reddit or different things where you can kind of share your story. Um, one other thing I would do, um, again, I live in a state where you can't grow this. Uh, I live in Idaho, but uh, if I were growing hemp, I would probably focus on organic hemp. And I, you look at, there's so many practices where there, there's not a lot of things registered for this product. You're practically doing a lot of the work already um, where uh -huh. you're eating. You're not applying uh, many chemicals uh, to this. There's plenty of uh, uh, OMRI uh, fertilizers um, that you could put. I, you're gonna get a premium if you grow uh, organic hemp. And uh, I don't think your cost is gonna be that much more it will be more, but I, you definitely would want to study the economics on that. But my guess is um, it's a good way to stand out. And uh, I know that that's where consumer interest is at. And uh, so just wanted to leave you with some of these, uh, these marketing tips in ways to really kind of help protect yourself. And uh, if there's one single thing uh, that you take away from this, I would probably make sure that you have a contract in place. If you're going to grow this, and you want to make sure that you, uh, you know, find somebody that you want to work with and uh, get that contract and I'll have an attorney um, help put that together just to make sure it's uh, legally binding. I talked earlier about our new hemp calculator. We're really excited uh, to release this and share this with, uh, uh, with the public uh, and with hemp growers. And so uh, be on the lookout for that. And at this time, Richard, I want to say thank you. And I want to thank our audience uh, for uh, hanging in there and, and uh, uh, spending time with me uh, over the last 40 minutes. And uh, if there's any questions, you can uh, email me uh, or you can, um, um, you know, go to our website. We've got uh, a resource guide uh, that talks uh, quite a bit about hemp. We have a brochure uh, that our marketing department's put together. It's uh, phenomenal. Uh, I think it's probably one of the best uh, technical know-how brochures uh, out there, not only about just irrigation, uh, there's plenty of that in there, but uh, things also outside of that that will help uh, uh, help you uh, become a better hemp grower. So appreciate it, Richard, and uh, thank you. Yeah, hey, great job today, Kevin. Uh, really find this fascinating, and I love having the three-part series uh, so that we could really get into the details, right? I often say I get just enough information to be dangerous, but uh, you really took us through the whole process and got into the details. So if anybody's missed part one and part two, it's on the Jane website. Just uh, look at uh, uh, janesusa.com and uh, look for the uh, trainings tab and you can find all of our trainings there. We do have one last question, Kevin. It's uh, from one of our viewers and they're asking, is, uh, is hemp sprayed for mold or other diseases very often? Is this something that the uh, growers are doing? I don't think you can spray it for mold. Um, I don't think there's anything labeled uh, for that, but you can, uh, you can identify it. Um, you know, I think different universities uh, have, uh, uh, you know, good, uh, good photos of what it looks like. Um, if, if somebody wants to email me directly on this, um, I've got uh, a little bit of information I can share with you, but uh, yeah, you, you go on, you're really just going to want to remove it from the plant is, is really the best that uh, you can do. You can't spray for it to, to my knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, thank you, Kevin. These are some of my favorite lunches um, that I've spent this year uh, learning all about hemp and irrigation. So thank, thank you for that. Uh, I want to remind everybody too, Kevin Stewart's emails on this slide, uh, email him. He's a great resource. He really cares and wants to help you. So, uh, so please, uh, I, I want to say take advantage of that, but you're not taking advantage. 
you know, he, he really does want to partner and help. So uh, th that's great news. We'll be emailing everybody with this information as well as the uh, uh, calculator. So we'll be on the lookout for that. Again, thank you, Kevin. Uh, thank you, viewers. We appreciate your time. And uh, we want to deliver the best educational information for you. So please feel free to email me as well to let me know if we're hitting the mark or missing the mark or if there's other things you want to uh, learn about. So again, thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Thanks again, Kevin. And we will talk to you soon. Thanks, Richard.